I have 100 days to beat Ark Supreme, a complete overhaul mod with several tiers of creatures that you can only progress through once you defeat that particular tier's boss. Oh, and there's no flyers in this mod, so I guess this is also a no flying challenge. Before we begin though, I would like to announce that I now have merch. This is my first merch drop and will not stick around forever, so click the link below to be able to cop some of this fire merch at shopaztec.store. Now let's see if we can complete this mod within 100 days. Ah, welcome legends to day one of this new modded 100 days adventure. I'm pretty excited for you to join in on this one. It's pretty different this time. Oh crap. Except for that, that's, that's pretty much the same as all my other 100 days. Ah, let's try that again. Since we're killed by an overgrown rooster, I have to assume that everything in this mod is trying to murder me. See? See? Even this parasol is trying. N not very effectively, but it's trying. And this white bee as well. I'm not too sure why this parasol isn't actually a Okay, okay, don't worry. I think the best plan of attack for us right now is to try and get some levels into us. That way we can get a little bit more stamina and speed so we can escape some of these dangers. I quickly craft up some tools and then gather some thatch from these trees so we could do our little cheesy method of gaining experience. Crafting chibis. A lot of them. Yeah, so this happened a couple more times before we actually got a decent start. Now that I have a few levels under my belt and can craft some decent items, I went ahead and pretended that I was KSI punching some of my victims in the boxing ring so I could gather some resources to create some early game tools. I even crafted myself a spear because this bee kept trying to murder me. Two of them! They're pretty weak, so I quickly dispatch them, and they drop this Delta B Summoner Elixir. We'll find out what that does a little bit later. But for now, I need to put down a little starter base just to keep us safe and start gathering some more resources to collect. We finished the base on day two. It's nothing special, but I did enclose it just in case, you know, something tried to get in and kill us. I then went ahead and used the bee summoning elixir. I was curious to see what it actually did. And well, it, it does exactly what it says it does. It summons in a bee. I now need to go and collect some hide so I can create some of the crafting stuff. You know, like a forge and smithy. So I approached this big green Jaboa, stabbed it, and died. When you die in this mod, you actually lose experience points. So it's important to go pick up your body after just to gain those levels back. Not too far away from our base, I found a big green dodo. And typically these are pretty easy to kill. Please die, please die, please die, please die. But this is modded arc, and it wasn't that simple. I led that dodo all the way back to my base and continued to try and kill it while trying to be safe at the same time. Unfortunately, I died in the process, and this was going to lead to a series of very unfortunate events. Since I didn't have a bed down, I had to spawn back on the beach and attempt to run back to my base. But every time I tried, I died. Oh my... Fucking... Jabos are freaking aggressive. I knew I had to switch things up. This was just getting way too hard. So I went out to explore and try and find a better base location. And that's when I spotted this. So of course I went straight up to it, walked into its heavenly gates and transported to this safe haven. It's actually just a floating island above the map. Or is it really heaven? Day three, of course, I put down a little starter base. Then we got to some farming until we spotted our first vanilla dino on the map. And this is probably our only chance to be able to get some hide. We literally chased this dino around for ages until he fell off this cliff where there was a tech track waiting for him. And these tech tracks basically one shot everything, but they don't harvest the bodies. So we can still gather some hide. We now have enough resources to be able to place down our very own Supreme Refining Forge. We need this one for this mod as it crafts certain metals that you need for the mod. Now that things are looking up, it's time for us to get ourselves some metal tools and uh, maybe put some clothes on. <coughs> now that we're all dressed and ready for the world, we went down to the beach with my metal pike and took out our first Delta Dino, a level 80 dodo. Yeah, we're really making moves in this game. Day four, we now have enough resources to place down the Supreme Workbench. This will allow us to be able to create items that are specific to this mod. We then place down the Supreme Cauldron. It kind of works like an overpowered mortar and pestle, but it crafts items specific for this mod, such as kibbles, rare flowers, and narcotics. Now that we can start crafting some real gear for this mod, I think it's time we better try and go and tame something. And I think this parasol is going to be the first one we tame. Luckily, in this mod, they're a passive tame, so I just had to run up to it, shove some kibble up its butt, and uh, it's now our friend. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough delta hide to be able to craft a saddle for it. So with the help of the parasol, we went out to go hunt some innocent green victims. 
after collecting some hide off of their green chicken, we went to go fight this green Jaboa. And this might have been a mistake. Look at the damage it's doing compared to what we're doing to it. I ran away to create some distance because, yeah, our parasol is going to die. That's a lesson to you, kids. Don't pick a fight that you can't win. But hey, on the bright side, the parasol's dead body we could still use to make a future saddle. Possibly for this parasol right here. Because we tamed it and put a saddle on it. And we named him Donald. Riding a parasol. Riding a parasol. Wait, before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to somebody. This is Sarah, and she loves smooth men. Hi, my name's Sarah, and I love smooth men. And thanks to Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0, you can now have all the smoothness that Sarah desires. Mm -hmm. The Performance Package comes with a lawnmower 4.0, which is the fourth generation electric trimmer. That also features a cutting edge ceramic blade designed to reduce those nasty cuts on your, well, well, any way you choose to use it. And for those areas that the sun don't shine, it comes with an LED spotlight, so you don't miss any spots. This trimmer is also waterproof, so no more mess on your bathroom floor. You can take it in the shower and shave all that mess off your body and come out feeling like a brand new man. Now, if you really want to impress Sarah, you can up your game by using the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Trimmer, which has a 7,000 RPM motor with a steel blade system and upgraded cutting performance from their first generation Weed Whacker. Now that you have your appearance down, you probably need to make sure that Sarah doesn't smell anything a little funky you know what i mean fortunately for you the performance package 4.0 comes kitted with the crop preserver ball deodorant and the crop reviver ball toner spray manscaped even threw in two free gifts the manscaped anti-chafing boxes and the shed travel bag so head on over to manscaped.com today and you will receive 20 percent off plus free international shipping when you use my promo code aaron at the checkout again that's 20 percent off plus free international shipping when you use my promo code aaron at manscaped.com day five we took donald out to go kill some of the local wildlife but only the weak ones because technically being delta tier we're, we're weak and when donald's health was really really low we went back to base so we could formulate a new plan of attack for the day but i keep getting stuck in this stupid teleporter and going up and down the plan of attack for the rest of the day is yes this we want to tame ourselves some resource gatches so i threw down some stone foundations only to realize that doesn't actually work i swear it usually does I eventually figured out you need to tame these with just normal stone. I tamed a few of these gatches and then just started leading them back to base. These resource gatches are the only way to be able to get certain ores in this mod to be able to craft certain items from this mod. Like copper ore that this particular resource gatcher drops. I named him Mr. Copper. I woke up on day 6 and collected all the crystals that we had gathered from all the resource gatches. We got this rather snazzy riot chest piece from it too. And I also crafted this delta gliding suit. Since there's no flyers in this mod or in this map, the glider suit is probably going to be our main point of transport. Building our base up on a height makes it much easier to get to certain places, like this metal rich mountain. It's a shame though, the locals of this mountain aren't very welcoming. Oh my god, why did I dive down? I think for now I better farm metal in easier spots like right down here just below the base day seven we continued progressing through this mod and made our first proper armor the delta hide armor then i went out to tame a much better dino than our parasol and one of my favorite dinosaurs the delta trike i made a good old pillar trap lured it into the trap and locked it in and then knocked it out but as i tried to feed the trike kibble this dilo killed it day eight and we're down on the beach starter area and that's when i saw this bulb dog and noticed that it was a passive tame and only required one kibble to tame but i figured let's just tame it and see what it does turns out this was the best decision i'd made all game you see bulb dogs are pretty fast and they jump really high which will make getting around this map a lot easier than just walking or even gliding is it just me or do they have a kind of ugly cuteness about them i was certain that me and this bulb dog were going to be such good friends i gave it a name and we named it Alistair. And Alistair definitely needs a sexy time friend, you know, to make some more babies. So we went out and found this girl. We named her Allie, you know, to kind of keep the theme going. On my way back to base, I stopped off to gather some obsidian. This really wasn't my smartest move. You know when you jump off your dino and then you start hearing that sound? You know it's game over. So yeah, we lost both of our bulb dogs in that process. But fortunately, they're pretty easy to tame. And with that, we got our stuff back kind of easily. Then that night, we went back out to go and try and tame ourselves. Another Delta Trike. It's only a level 400, but it'll do for now. It wasn't until the following day that the Delta Trike was ready to be ours. We named this girl Destiny after my cousin with a big forehead. 
And since we had a little bit of extra time, I gave a name to our Delta Bulb Dog, Alice. Because I think Alice is a pretty name, and Bulb Dogs are ugly. They need all the help that they can get. Now that we have a trike, I immediately put her to work by gathering some berries around our island base area. And then I wanted to see what she could do out in the battlefield, aka the wilds. And the first victim is this Jaboa. And as Destiny kept hunting more prey, she got stronger and stronger. We only hunted Delta tier dinos, because I know very well we would not match up against anything higher tiered. After a successful hunt, we took Alice out to do some exploring. I wanted to see what else this map could offer, and I found this cave entrance covered in spider webs. We went in, saw this thorny dragon with over 1 billion health, and uh, yeah, we left straight away. Day 10, we continued doing more exploring, and that's when we found these beaver dams. And we all know early game beaver dams are OP. And of course, I went straight for the big dog, the giant beaver den. So I dove straight in and underneath the den, opened it up, collected what I needed to, made my way out, only for some beavers to be rather pissed off. And uh, Alice died in the process. It's a good thing that bulb dogs are disposable in this mod. You know what else they can do? Jump from all the way up here and receive no fall damage. I then went and collected the remains of my body and then chose a smarter, easier beaver dam to steal some cementing paste out of. Day 11, I built this platform leading off of the teleporter on the floating island, but I also wanted to have a space that I could place down this awesome teleporter. Now that we had an awesome teleporter and could get back to base quite easily, I then ventured out and explored a little bit further than normal. And that's when I found this point of interest, which kind of acts like the obelisks in normal maps, but instead it's like a dwarven themed, uh, I don't know, castle thing. Further exploring, we spotted a giant green dung beetle. Although rather strange and uh, quite big, these are always a staple in basically any playthrough in Ark. So, of course, I tamed it. I immediately took this green beetle back to base, and then I appropriately named it Diarrhea. In day 12, I found a new location of interest. This little cave waterfall area. I like it because it's kind of flat, there's some water around, and some higher tier dino spawn nearby. It's pretty far away from our current base location, so I placed down an awesome teleporter so we can get back here whenever we need. I did notice that there was a delta tier aloe nearby, so I took this opportunity to try and tame it. This turned out to be quite difficult since there was a Prime Allosaurus and an Apex Allosaurus a part of the pack as well. Getting a good angle on the grapple hooks was quite hard, so I dropped down to this little cliff and uh, turns out the Prime Allosaurus can reach us from here. I teleported back to try and tame this Allosaurus and yeah, this happened once again. The Delta Allosaurus was a low level anyway, it's kind of pointless and not really worth my energy. Day 13, I placed down this Architect Bench. It's a really good quality of life mod that I'm going to use always in the future. But what am I using it for now? Well, I'm planning on building a greenhouse. And since there's no water up here on the floating islands, I had to place down these metal water tanks to, you know, store some water. Oh yeah, we'll probably need some crop pots down too. Day 14, I found a Delta snail out in the wilds, but this Fiomi was really loud and annoying. Yeah, that's one way to shut them up. Now, as most of us know, these snails passively generate cementing paste, so of course, I'm gonna enslave it. Day 15, I figured it might be a good idea to start breeding our bulb dogs. After all, ugly things do deserve love too, and they basically die one shot from everything in the world, so, you know, having backups is good. Speaking of ugly things, yeah, my head's a bit of a mop, so I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, we just shaved it all off. No, not really. It'll grow into what we expected soon. I then noticed our girl Destiny was feeling a little lonely too. So we went out to go find her a mate. And there was one on the beach. So of course we tamed it, brought it back. And Destiny now has a good friend. Day 16, we got our first fully bred up bulb dog. And I named it Aquila. I'm not really sure where I got that name. Kind of sounds Mexican and kind of sounds like Aquila. But, you know, uh, it's, yeah. We immediately took Aquila out to try and find ourselves some better dinos that we can try and actually fight a boss with. Unfortunately, a big blue gorilla boss found us. And then we had a race for our lives. Holy crap, what is that? He just threw a rock at us? Holy crap, he's still there! I thought I got away! Go, 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 go. Get up. Oh, we gotta go back around. We're so dead. Alright, oh, big blue beauty. Don't want that. Ah, he won't make it over this. What is that? It was at this point, I kind of thought I got away. I was wrong. Oh, 
Oh my god. Day 17, we went out to go and try and find a creature that could help us fight a boss. This took up a massive chunk of our day, but eventually we did find one here in the Redwoods. We found this level 520 Delta Thylacolio. Since there's no flyers in this game, it's a little trickier to be able to tame some of these creatures. And you kind of have to think outside the box. So I grabbed my grapple hook, grapple hooked up this tree, and just tranked the thylacolier out from here. Don't run, don't run, don't run, don't run, don't run. Yes! That ended up being a lot easier than I thought it would be. And now we have a thylacolio. I was trying to soul ball him, but uh, it didn't work. So I figured I'd just teleport him home. Except uh, he's still on follow mode. Rookie move. Let's try that again. I was extremely excited now that we had a thylacolio, something that is just a proper killing machine. All our other dinosaurs weren't really killers, but this one is. I had to go see what kind of damage it does. Now, 3k damage is a step in the right direction, but let's put some levels into him and see what he does. And 5,000 damage at this level of the game is pretty decent. I just hope it holds up against a big boss. Now, in order to fight the bosses in the Supreme mod, I'm going to need a lot more thylacolios than just one. So yes, I need to find a breeding partner for our new thylacolio. I jumped from the floating island down to the redwoods, climbed up this tree, and there he was, a Delta Thylacolio. But if it isn't already obvious, there's a lot more powerful crazy creatures around. Knocking it out will be one thing, but then getting it out alive, very hard. Our biggest issue was this prime basilisk. I could stay away from its poison balls by getting high, but if I hit that ground, I am one shot away from death. I eventually got the basilisk away enough but there were other troubles around. And that's when I made this simple mistake. I dropped down to the ground to try and head over to this rock, only to find out I didn't have any more grapple hooks left. Rip. I then returned to our tree, and uh, yeah. Even more dinos spawned. I tried shooting them with my shotgun, only to find out that these bullets don't actually work against anything other than the summoners. The next day, I came up with a genius idea to be able to extract the Stylocolio out of the redwoods. We're just gonna charge at it and hope for the best. I got to it, put some kibble into it, it tamed, and then I just started shooting my soul gun at it, hoping that I captured it. I died, of course. Did I get it? I have no idea. I have no idea. I got back to base, went to the awesome teleporter, retrieved my corpse, checked my inventory, and it was there. Oh, we got it. We got it. Obviously, I got these two pussycats out to start breeding straight away. Moving on to day 20, I think it's about time we progress to the alpha tier. And in order to do that, we need to fight a boss. I chose this area as our little boss fighting arena. So I made sure to put down an awesome teleporter so we can get back and forth to this area whenever we need. I then placed down the boss summoner, but we're not actually quite ready to fight a boss just yet, as we need to still raise an entire army to be able to fight the boss in this mod. Day 21, some of our babies have all grown up, but then we had to go through the painstaking task of putting levels into every single one of them. Day 22, we were now prepared to be able to fight the Delta boss and move on to the Alpha tier. I made sure I had my entire Delta, Trike, and Thylacolio army ready for battle, and then summoned in the Delta boss. Ooh, there we go. The boss came in, and yeah, it's just a massive King Jaboa. I sent in all my Trikes, all my Thylacolios, for ready to fight, and then the entire screen went red. The Delta boss summons in a ton of little minions that come and mess you up, so we had to avoid them the entire time, whilst the remaining of my army fought the Delta boss. Then the Delta boss finished off the rest of my army, so I had to make a swift escape. Yeah, we just copped a fat L. Luckily, I was on a Thylacolio, so I scaled this mountain and uh, got out of the way. I then teleported back home, and I guess now it's back to the drawing board. The following day, I just harvest some resources while pondering my failures in life. I then went back to the boss arena and placed down all of these behemoth gates to try and gate it off a little bit so that when the boss summons in, it doesn't fall off the edge. It's now day 24 and we used all of yesterday building up the boss arena and we also used that time to raise up another army to give this delta boss another crack. When I was placing out all my thylacolios, we got this mutation and damn it looks cool. Look at that, that's a sick mutation. You can't die, you look like, you look like a toffee apple. I mean, it really does look like a toffee apple. So much, I had to name it Toffee Apple after a candy I loved growing up. The one thing about having a massive army going into a boss fight means we have to spend basically the entire day leveling dinos and then throwing them out of their soul traps. It's pretty time consuming. It's already day 25 now, and I haven't even gotten off the first Delta tier yet. We really need to defeat this boss. So I craft some saddles up and then get my entire army ready for battle once again. This is Delta boss fight attempt number two. The Delta boss is spawned in, so I send in my first wave of dinosaurs, which is basically pretty much all of them. 
they're fighting pretty well and holding up hopefully we oh there goes one there goes two more oh there goes a lot more oh oh no and there goes all the rest the death names keep popping up we are losing this battle i send in the second wave and hope for the best i really feel like this is all over i don't think we're going to be able to hold up the delta boss has taken very little damage so i don't know what to do for now it's now day 26 and we just lost to the delta boss for the second time we need to really rethink our strategy here i'm pretty confident i know what i need to do now so i get on my bulb dog and travel around the map trying to find myself this a high level delta allosaurus my attempt at taming this was kind of tricky you might have seen that i did try and set up a trap but for some reason it doesn't stay in the trap and the bear trap doesn't work my bad so what i decided to do is just use my thylacolio to tank it while i shoot off the back of it to knock it out this took some time so i had to teleport back to base to heal up my thylacolio and return to finish off the job when the allosaurus started running it fell into a crack and that's where i knocked it out from we now have our very own max level delta allosaurus we just need to find a mate for him now fortunately the following day we found one in this forest here it was only a level 500 but i think that having a level 600 should make up the difference hopefully and fortunately for us taming this girl was a pretty straightforward process we now have a pretty decent pair of breeding allosauruses we're just gonna have to wait a day or two until we have enough allosaurus babies to be able to fight this boss again day 28 and i'm out in the wilds trying to kill as many delta dinos as i possibly can why you may ask well because i didn't realize how important having saddles on your dinos really was in this mod if you're wearing the particular saddle to the particular boss that you're fighting it halves the amount of damage that boss can do to your dinos i had also just realized after all this time i had forgotten an important member of our team evo my personal chibi so now it's day 29 and this is round three of fighting the delta boss my army's a little bit smaller, but I'm running out of time. I'm really hoping that these Allosauruses pull through. The big fairy furball summons in. I send in my entire army and they're fighting away, doing pretty well until they all die once a freaking again. I open up the gate and I make a swift escape, running across this bridge to get away from this monster. I take a quick glimpse back and realize that the giant Jaboa can't get through. I climb to the top of this mountain and I heal up the Thylacolio. Then I charge back into the battle with this big Jaboa riding in solo but i don't care we're 29 days in and i need to make some moves we attack away until our health drops a little bit we charge back to the mountain climb up it heal ourselves up again and head back on into the action but this time with a couple more dinos that i had laying around that were kind of disposable they didn't last very long but they kind of helped tank some damage for me while i could hit it we repeated this process over and over and over again and with the delta boss almost dead we went in for our final attack to finish off the job. Its health has gone low and there we have it. We had successfully beaten the Delta boss and now we can move up to the Alpha tier. Day 30 and to celebrate our win, we do some gardening. Yeah, that's because we got these Alpha seeds. These Alpha seeds will eventually grow Alpha fruit, which we need to be able to make some Alpha kibble to be able to obviously tame some Alpha dinos. Wow, that's a lot of Alpha in one sentence. I then took Toffee Apple out to go hunt down some Alpha Dinos so we could collect their blood, as blood is the main ingredient for the Alpha Kibble in this mod. The next step, we had to summon in our Alpha Honey Bee. Then we feed it some Alpha Rare Flowers and make ourselves an Alpha Beehive. But before we could actually tame anything, we're going to need these Alpha Trank Darts. Day 31 and we're fully prepared to be able to go out and tame our very first Alpha Dino. The problem is, we need to find something that's actually decent to tame. There's lots of dinos, but because there's so many different tiers, it's hard to find the specific one you need at the specific level you want. We weren't having much luck roaming around on the ground, so I decided to hit the skies with our glider. And that's when we found this Anki. I of course landed and then started tranking it out. Once I finally got it knocked out, I noticed that there was an electric raptor just up the ways. Which, uh, yeah killed the Anki that we were just trying to tame. I then used my glider to make a quick escape and I uh, just wasn't fast enough. I was kind of annoyed at this point, so I jumped on the back of Toffee Apple and took my frustration out on some of the dinos around the area. This kind of turned out to be a monumental mistake. Toffee Apple was killed by a freaking dragonfly of all things. It was a pretty sad moment and Toffee Apple was a great dino, but she did leave us with an important message. She said, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anyway, we did end up finding another Alpha Anki, and we knocked this one out with no troubles. So that's a good thing, right? We did have to wait until the next day for the Alpha Anki to be fully tamed up, though. And since now we have an Anki, we might as well just start, you know, mining metal. Day 33, we found our next target that we're going to force into a forever friendship contract. 
Yeah, this level 560 alpha track. It had another friend with it that wasn't too happy that we were trying to steal its friend away from it. Thankfully, there was a cliff here. And cliffs are your best friends in mods that don't let you fly. I eventually knocked it out and then I teleported back to base because I didn't have any kibble on me. Well, not enough anyway. But while I was roaming around back at base waiting for the kibble to be made, my game froze. So at this point, I just decided to log off for the day. And when I returned, I completely forgot about the trike. So I just went about doing my daily stuff. And that's when I decided to give myself a haircut. Seems kind of random, but it is for good reason. Human hair is the main ingredient to be able to craft one of these bad boys, the S Plus Gardener. We did run into one problem though. S Plus Gardeners run off of beer. And for some reason, the beer barrels that I crafted here don't seem to be working off the metal pipes and the tanks. I assume the water source has to come straight from the ocean. So I just found a little safe spot down on the beach, crafted up a little beer hut. And this is what we're going to use to be able to make our beer. I then went ahead and finished off the day by getting out of the shabby Delta armor and into a brand new full set of Alpha armor, which is basically chitin armor, but for the mod. I don't know how I feel about the way it looks yet. Day 34, I took my Thylacolio out to go hunt down some more Alpha dinos. But as we were strolling along the beach, I spotted that trike that we forgot about. So I quickly ran back to base, made some kibble, returned, and then tamed this trike. The rest of the day, I went back out into the wilderness to try and find ourselves a powerful dino that we can tame. I eventually found this Alpha Rex. It is only a level 60, but I tamed it anyway. I then head on out to see if I can go and find myself a female max level Alpha Rex. Even though the Alpha Rex that we already have is low level, if we find a max level with high stats, that can make the difference up when we start breeding. Ooh, an ant. Oh. Damn it. Well, since we spawned back at base, I decided I was going to make myself an Alpha Rex saddle and jump on our little weakling of a Rex. We went out to attack some things, and yeah, it was just as expected. It's pretty underwhelming. But this little excursion outside of base wasn't all for nothing. This Alpha Bulb Dog, I wanted to tame it. And they're a pretty easy passive tame. Of course, I immediately wanted to see if this Alpha Bulb Dog was any good. So we took him out for a little bit of a stroll around the entire map, visiting most of the biomes, just exploring. Now, it's just like the Delta Bulb Dog, but because it's a little bit bigger, it did get stuck in a few places that made it a bit tricky to get out of some certain situations, like this. Ooh. Yep, I guess we're just going to have to keep continuing on with the Delta Bulb Dogs, which must have been our lucky charm because we found this Alpha Dodicarus that we only spotted because we couldn't actually make it up this cliff. And a few skillfully placed shots later, we now have ourselves an Alpha Dodicarus. Doesn't it look cute? Kind of looks like a sperm covered in blood. Day 36, I got on the back of the Dodicurus and started collecting as much stone as I possibly could. And instead of using the Anki for metal, I switched it out for a mining drill. It ended up being way easier, way better to use this. We spent basically the entire day collecting a crap ton of metal because tomorrow we're going to start working on our proper base. And now it's time for us to build our base. But first, we need to get rid of some of the dinos that are hanging around. And here it is, the final product. I would have done the full montage, but it really would have taken ages. Instead, let's do a tour. All right, let's do a little bit of a tour. So we're going to need to change this. We'll leave this as a little greenhouse, but I think we need to upgrade it. We're going to move into here. We've got a little crafting area to the left. I've left this one open here so we can have like a replicator room. Got three different rooms here that I'm not too sure what we're going to do with. It's got, I don't know why I made it like this. It just... You know, we'll, we'll probably do something. I, I don't know. And out here, I'm going to do like a breeding area slash gacha farm. Put the gachas around here. And then, you know, make, the, make whatever I need to breed, breed. So that my soul terminals that are right here can catch what we need. There was something missing though, and it's just the aesthetics of the whole thing. I just had to place these things on top of the, the walls just to make it look a little nicer. A little bit castle-ish. Day 39 and we're back on the hunt for another Alpha Rex. And we did find this level 360 female. We did tame it, but I don't really know why. It's not really worthwhile taming it since it's not going to be able to stand up against the Alpha boss. I mean, 13k damage is pretty good, but I know it's not enough. It's now day 40 and we still haven't found an Alpha Rex that's decent enough for us to tame. But while out exploring, we came across this Alpha Therizino. And not only are they strong, they're pretty useful for, you know, fiber and berries and, you know, seeds and stuff. So once again, I forced this Therizino into slavery and named her Veronica. 
That's my bitch. Day 41 and we got extremely lucky. We found this level 600 female Alpha Rex. But taming it was kind of tricky. I tried laying down these gates to trap it in, but it didn't work. I wanted to stop it from doing exactly this, running away from me into something more dangerous. It eventually fell off this cliff and landed in the water. And that's where I'd knock it out from. I quickly fed it and then I teleported back to base because I have this theory that if I'm out of render, nothing touches it. And I was right. Once I teleported back, we now have a max level Alpha Rex. And I didn't waste any time taking her back to base to start breeding. Day 42, while we're waiting for our Alpha Rexes to breed up a massive army for us, we took our Theri out to gather some berries and some fiber. I then placed down this generator so I could start setting up some air conditioning units. I wanted the base to stay kind of neat, so I tried out this little technique that I do for putting down our air conditioning units. So I take out this foundation, and then I place down the air conditioning units in where that foundation was and then cover it up with a ceiling. This way, it looks nice and neat and is pretty effective. Also, I decided to run around my base naked. No, not really. We were collecting these gacha crystals. I don't know why I'm naked. And I realized with all these gacha crystals that we got, it comes with a lot of random items. And since those random items are basically useless to us, we made an industrial grinder so we could grind them down and get resources back for it. I mean, look at all these armor and tools and stuff that we've collected all through these drops. And then once we grind it, we have all of these resources. With a couple babies of our Alpha Rex all grown up, I wanted to speed up production a little bit. So I added this female so she could join in on the action, if you know what I mean. We just kind of stood here and watched this happen all day. Is it weird to watch T-Rexes breed? Maybe. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. Day 44, we headed on over to the boss arena. Today's plan was to be able to summon in and defeat a Delta Summoner. Now, summoners come in all the different tiers that you find in this mod, but once you defeat them, they drop different items like XP potions and stuff now as far as i'm aware the best way to defeat these guys is with the shotgun that you can make in the supreme workbench it's also handy to take some spare dinos with you to take care of the dinos that the summoner summons in we were pretty patient and since we were at the alpha level already this fight wasn't too tricky we killed it but i was kind of disappointed with the loot that we got from it just a tiny xp potion and a small xp potion day 45 and 46 we spent the entire time preparing for the next boss fight so that we could progress to the apex tier we went out gathering some blood and some hides so we can create some more alpha rex saddles and i took a selection of alpha rexes out to gain some extra levels day 47 and it's now time for us to fight the alpha boss but first we have to go through the tedious and painful task of setting up our entire alpha rex army from throwing them all out of soul balls and leveling up all of their stats. Oh, I had to heal them all with healing dots as well. Then I quickly jumped into creative mode so I could get a pretty cool cinematic shot, but this basically screws things up for us a little bit later. You'll see why. And now without further ado, it's time to summon in the alpha boss. Yeah, that's him. He's like an armored fire wolf thing. Until my Rexes get in there. Then he's just a pile of numbers. Now, typically I'd show you the whole fight, but there really wasn't much to see. Just a pile of Rexes and some numbers. And yeah we defeated the boss but we're supposed to see like a whole heap of things unlock but we didn't i didn't realize this at the time but because we went into creative mode earlier the game recognized that we already had all the engrams unlocked so it wouldn't give it to us so the next day we just continued on our way our first task was to take down this tech trike now it had 10 million health so i took two alpha dinos with me it took us a little bit of time but in the end we did take it down and the reason we wanted to kill this was for the resources that it drops it drops these apex electronics and this apex polymer that we could take back to base and then craft an apex chainsaw and why do we need an apex chainsaw well so we can harvest the bones off of these apex skeletal dinos and then we turn those bones into this apex bone meal, which is another ingredient that we need to make apex kibble. Now that we have that sorted, we now need to get honey and we don't have an apex bee. So we're gonna have to go on out and try and find one. Luckily, I found one here in this little forest. I quickly killed it, brought it back to base, and now we can start making our own honey. And we basically have everything we need to make our own apex kibble. Day 49, I immediately went out to go and hunt down a powerful Apex Dino. I wasn't here to play. I wanted to tame something that I knew would help us in the next boss fight. And that's when we spotted this Apex Yudi. Now, it is a low level, but that doesn't matter. If we have a large enough army, we can just sit at the back and courage roll. Once we knocked it out, we quickly tamed it. We didn't name it because I'm afraid of building a connection with some of these dinos that keep dying on me. It's not my fault. At the end of this day, I tended to my crops and then I logged out for the day. The next day, I logged back in, and then I realized, oh wait, none of the Apex stuff had actually unlocked. Yeah, that was the problem when trying to go into creative mode to create a cool cinematic experience for you guys, but it didn't really work out for me. So really, I had no other choice but to go back to the Alpha boss and fight him again. At least this time, we unlocked all the proper engrams. 
Now we can get back to business trying to find ourselves a really powerful team that we can take into a boss fight. Obviously the Apex Rex would be at the top of our list, but we couldn't find anything around the map. We did run into this max level 600 Apex Kentosaurus. So I quickly put up a pillar trap, shot it to kite it in, and uh, yeah, this all happened. Oh crap! Yep, turns out the Kentrosaurus can just walk straight through the pillar trap. Now, even though the pillar trap wasn't really effective, the Kentrosaurus seemed to have a rather weird attraction to it. So we used it until it decided to run away from us. Eventually, we knocked it out, and now we have our very own level 600 Kentrosaurus. And we decided to name him Colton, after a guy I knew from school that always had really spiky hair. I didn't want to waste any time, I wanted to make sure that Colton was really up for the challenge of being able to fight some bosses. So we took him out to see what kind of damage he could do. And it's not bad, but once we start breeding an army of these with some imprints, they might be significantly better. Day 51, while out looking for teams, we found another level 600 dino. Now this is super rare, so I had to take the opportunity to tame it. I know it's just a stego, but... You know, we just thought I had to take it. I eventually knocked it out, but as we're waiting for it to tame up, this happened. Bro, what the heck? What the frick's happening? Oh, Bloodstalker, go away! Will the chainsaw work? I don't think this is gonna work. This is my only shot. Oh my god, we're dead. We're dead. Oh my god, I died. Once I eventually respawned, we had the opportunity to be able to teleport back and pick up our brand new Stego. And I didn't waste any time checking out to see how much damage it could do and, you know, how much damage it could take. Uh, this almost was a mistake because uh, we ran into a raptor and, yeah, you'll see what happens. Oh, shit. Uh, this is a bad idea. This is bad. This oh, my God, we just survived. Holy frick. Yeah, with that craziness that just happened, I wasn't going to risk it. The next day, I basically just went out and hunted down apex dinos that I could kill to collect some more blood and hide. Day 53, we tracked down and tamed this male Kentrosaurus. So now we can start breeding along with Colton. And I've also got enough resources to be able to change out of this alpha armor into this apex armor. I then made my way over to the boss fighting arena that we had made to summon in the apex summoner. Once the apex summoner was summoned in, we got a couple shots off on it, and then it summoned in a bunch of apex level dinos. We only had our alpha rexes, and I thought it was going to be enough, but then things kind of went south from here. Because we didn't repair the gates from the last battle, they all kind of just went over the edge of the boss arena and went down below. My rexes ended up getting stuck a little bit below the apex rexes, and ended up just being a feeding trough for the apex rexes. They all got deleted out of existence, and yeah, this whole battle ended up being pretty scuffed. So yeah, I just basically decided to teleport back home to get away from this situation. I returned back to the battlefield a little bit later, and then when I peeked over the edge, I noticed there was a ton of Apex bodies just laying around. So I did take this opportunity to use my Apex chainsaw and harvest up a ton of hide and blood. Day 54, we went for a little bit of a casual glide around the map, just so we could see things from a different perspective. Since we can't fly, this is the best way to do it so far. And while we're out, we landed on this ledge and turned around and look. That's a level 540 Apex Rex. This seems to be a lucky spot for Rexes, I suppose. We felt pretty safe up on this little bit of a ledge, and then we realized that the Apex Rex figured out how to get up here by itself. How the frick did you work that out? I tried to make a quick escape, but when I realized it was all for nothing, I just had to keep shooting until it got me. I'm not dead. Oh, I'm dead. I returned a little bit later and finally knocked it out. The only problem is, there was a skeletal Rex right near it that really wanted to munch on me too. I don't know how it could be hungry if it's got no stomach. So my first job was to kite that skeletal rex away and quickly run up to the apex rex and feed it. Once I did, I teleported back to base just to stay out of render until it was fully tamed, then returned to pick it up. Later in the day in another location, we found a level 180 apex rex. Again, we'll just breed the stats into it. We only really care about its gender. Now we can let the ultimate apex lovemaking begin. Day 55, while we let our apex rexes do their thing, we went out on our Kentro to go and just do some stuff, starting with killing this resource rock golem, and then harvest its remains for all the ores that it has. I then tamed myself an apex dodo. I don't really know why, but it is a high level and, you know, dodos are always a cool team. Day 56, we had one Apex Rex all grown up, so I took it down here alongside a couple Alpha Rexes that I had spare to fight this elite resource rock golem. It was pretty damn tough. It took us a long while, and it did kill a couple of my dinos. I was just curious to see what we could harvest off one of these, since obviously it must be better. 
we killed a resource column and collected a shit ton of ores that I've never seen before. The next day, I bit down really hard on this Delta honeybee, which seemed to spawn in a massive purple they call it a wasp it had six million health but i was rocking with my apex rex so you know we're gonna handle our business i finally killed it and then i got myself a summoning potion but i didn't get to summon it in until the next day and yet i guess now we have a wasp i wasn't sure what it does until i checked it out they make boss tier honeys so we can start taming boss level creatures now i had one plan and one focus for today i really wanted to kill this apex summoner because once you finally do you unlock all the tech engrams and you get some element but i went into this fight making the biggest mistake possible i came with very little amount of ammo i kind of thought all the dinos i took with me were gonna hold it down but yes yeah, since nothing can fly this summoner was kind of hard to take out i eventually ran out of ammo and then we were forced to just follow the summoner around hoping that it would get low enough for us to be able to bite it out of the sky this fight was lasting so damn long i really regret not bringing enough ammo if you haven't noticed it's actually the next day one more one more one more hit one more hit oh my god we kept chasing the summoner around hoping it would get lower but i kind of felt like it was getting higher then at one random moment it looked like it got low enough for us to bite so i just aimed at the sky and started clicking like crazy there we go there we go baby there we go baby and then we killed it and got ourselves some tech engrams and some element we only got like a hundred or so element so it wasn't a lot but it was enough for us to make ourselves a tech replicator later on we want to make some transmitters so we can start finding dinos and creatures a lot easier than we had been in the past back out exploring i killed a resource gacha which in turn summoned in a gacha boss oh yes it spawned i was actually aiming to summon one of these in fighting this big purple looking barney looking fluff ball was kind of easy it was pretty pathetic as it couldn't get close enough to hit me and i just kept biting it so we killed it and then we got our own summoning elixir went back to base and summoned in our very own gacha boss they work like the normal resource gachas but they kind of craft like better items day 60 i crafted myself up a chemistry bench this way i can make a little bit more gunpowder to make it a bit easier to fight these guys yes the apex summoners and yeah this time i did come back with a lot more ammo so fighting this took us maybe a quarter of the time as it did last time the only problem is i learned a pretty harsh lesson to get the element you actually have to bite it with your dino you can't just shoot it since getting element from the apex summoner kind of failed i figured we might as well just continue on to the next tier and fight the apex boss our rexes have been getting quite busy creating a massive army for us so i went back to base and crafted up as many saddles as i possibly could returned to the boss fighting arena and started leveling up all the dinos and adding the saddles to them that's when i spotted this mutated one it's completely black wait i can't i can't send you into battle i'm riding you holy crap look at that oh my god that's the coolest freaking rex i've ever seen and since he's all black i gave him a black name deandre because he's black day 61 and our apex rex army is ready to fight i then go straight ahead and place down the boss summoning altar then add all the required items to be able to summon in the apex boss and then throw out my apex uteranosaurus i want to try the uti strat on this fight the apex boss gets summoned in and it's a little rhino so it's a little bit hard to make them or the rexes fight look i know i'm stupid at this point but i kind of forgot what the button is for setting all the dinos to aggressive i sat at the back of the pack using my courage raw hoping it's gonna end this fight for us i then noticed that a few of our apex rexes are dying but some of them were kind of weak because i didn't level all of them i got my long neck out and started healing some of the dinos just whatever i could kind of hit there was no real like strategy to it and as the fight progressed on i threw out a few spare apex rexes that i had i was nervous that we weren't going to win this fight and it's really important that we do our rexes were dropping like flies and i couldn't tell how much health the apex box had i kept doing the courage roll hoping for the best and then all of a sudden this happened that basically signaled us winning the fight i guess it's now day 62 and we've already progressed to the prime tier but i didn't have a prime honeybee and i couldn't find one around the map so that's when i decided to summon in another apex summoner because we've summoned so many of these in i was basically a pro at this point so i killed this one quickly and we scored 181 element from it so of course i didn't hesitate race back to base and crafted up a tech generator alongside a bunch of tech transmitters now we'll be able to locate any dino on the map that we're after day 63 we used the transmitter to try and find a prime honeybee 
And there wasn't one, but there was a fire honeybee. So I guess we're hunting fire honeybees now. I took DeAndre out into the redwoods to find these honeybees and we found them. Killed them, but yeah, again, it's not what we're looking for. So we're going to have to wait until maybe a prime honeybee spawns in. As we're making our exit out of the redwoods, we spotted these terror birds. One was a prime terror bird. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to go kill you. And as I tried killing it, its friend, the frost terror bird, came over and ruined everything. He killed our DeAndre. No, DeAndre. This was a sad moment. To pay our respects to DeAndre, we went back to base and made him a taxidermy. But there was a problem. When I put him in the taxidermy, he didn't quite look like DeAndre. Anyway, we've got other things to do. It's starting to get pretty late in this 100 days. We went back out to the wilds to try and, you know, spend some time waiting until hopefully a prime honeybee spawned. But instead, we got a gacha boss. So I'll take that for now. Day 64, a freaking prime honeybee finally spawned in. Ah, there it is. Come to Papa. Yeah, we got it. Now we can add to our collection by placing down a prime beehive. Now that we have all the essential items to be able to make kibble so that we can tame prime dinos, I went to the snow area because I wanted to tame a prime dire wolf. They might not be the strongest or anything, I just think they're freaking cool. We found this one, but it was surrounded by some pretty dangerous dinos, so I kind of just hit up on this ledge here. I ended up placing down an awesome teleporter around this location just in case we died. Well, I kind of expect that we're going to die. I then ran close to all these wolves to kite them over to me and then scaled the side of this cliff. Now I can finally get some decent shots in on this prime dire wolf until the little bitch runs away. Oh my god. So, I try a different strat. This time, I jump on the back of my Apex Kentro, because it'll kind of work as a tank for me, and then I shoot off the back of that trying to knock out this dire wolf. It's kind of effective until, uh, you know, it dies. Day 65, I return back on the back of an Apex Rex, but this time I try a different strategy. We're gonna net gun it. Yeah, that doesn't work either. Okay, this time we're just going to sit on the back of our Apex Rex and do this as many times as we need to. We do have a ton of spare Apex Rexes in case it dies. And this strat seemed to be the most effective one we had all day. I mean, like, all 100 day series. I mean, you know what I mean. And now we have a blue and black, cool as hell looking puppy. I named this puppy KSI because it's a prime direwolf. Get it? Prime KSI. I wonder how much damage it does unleveled. That's not too bad. Now, let's see what it does fully leveled. Yeah, okay, that's damn good. This is a massive step up from Apex, and I'm excited. So damn excited, in fact, we took on a Prime Tank boss. This Direwolf completely melted it. Now, I was really enjoying the Prime Direwolf, but it doesn't seem to enjoy getting shot by a healing dart. Every time I hit it, it just runs away. Well, flies away. Uh, what the hell are you doing, dog? I was then exploring casually around the map, and then I saw three freaking basilisks pop out of the ground. I knew it was strong, but I kind of didn't know that they could kill me off the back of the direwolf. This is bad, because we're about to lose our direwolf. I respawned, and then I teleported over to the boss arena, because that was the closest place that I know to where the direwolf was. The direwolf was getting damaged, but the only thing on my mind was get it in the soul ball as quick as I possibly can. Come on, you stupid muck, get in. Get in the freaking soul ball. Get in, get in, get in. Go, uh, yes. Once I finally got it in a soul wall, I then had to make a run for it. Because yeah, look at that. The basilisk is chasing me down. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Ouch. Oh no, fly, 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 fly. Just need to make it over this cliff. Oh, please, 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 please. Oh. Oh my god. Ha <laughs> ha we got away, bitch. Day 67, we found another prime direwolf. So I shot it, knocked it out, and tamed it. Then I brought it back to base and named it Logan Paul. So now, Logan Paul and KSI can start mating. What a great partnership. The morning of day 68, I started on a little bit of an extension of our base. This is just an area that we're going to call the Beehive. Why? 
Well, because obviously this is where we put all the beehives. It looks a little bit neater and a bit separate and kind of cool. Then later in the afternoon, we found the perfect boss fighting dino, the Prime Giga. Now, it is only a level 400, but that's okay. Hopefully, we'll find a max level of the opposite sex later on. And again, like I've said previously, just breed the stats into it. The problem is, we've got to try and knock this thing out without dying ourselves. Luckily, it had no interest in us, so knocking it out wasn't that hard. We had finally knocked it out and I fed it, but I was kind of worried that something was going to come close and kill it. So I had to stand guard for the entire time. I was really more nervous about that nuclear Magmasaurus that was there. It seems like they're kind of passive for now. Oh, maybe it's not so passive. I'm out of here. Day 69, the good old funny number. I took one of my bred up fully imprinted prime direwolves out to go hunt some more prime dinos so I could collect some prime hide and prime blood. Wow, that was a lot of prime in one sentence. And then literally out of nowhere, I caught this at the corner of my eye. I didn't see that one coming at all. I then thought maybe we'll just collect hide and blood the old fashioned way. We call this sacrificial slaughter. Later on in the day though, we did return and find that our direwolf was still in the water. I don't know where that big death worm was. I didn't really want to find out. Day 70, thanks to the tech transmitter, we found out that there was a massively high level Giga in the snow. So I got some fur armor because I knew we were going to freeze and found the Giga in this cave. Now I know typically cave dinos are non-tameable, but since this is modded, maybe we can tame this one. I'm just going to have to try and find out. If we can, it's worth it. If we can't, well, we just wasted basically an entire day. This Giga had 20.8 million torpor, so knocking this thing out is going to take quite a while. So much that even with the fur armor, we were so cold that we were losing health. So I went back to base, crafted up this industrial cooker so I could make some quick health potions and then rush back to try and knock this thing out. Once we finally killed the... Once we finally knocked out the Giga, we needed to sort out the Apex Rex. Luckily, its head was poking out, so I just got on the Direwolf and killed it. I then went ahead and fed the Prime Giga some kibble, and nothing was happening. Then I tried returning with a Taming Potion to get its food all the way down, and yes, our worst fear was confirmed. You cannot tame cave dinosaurs even in this mod. So in the end, I just had to kill it and then harvest it for its hide and blood. Day 71, we had collected so much prime resources that we had to change out of the Apex gear, obviously into the prime full set gear amazingness. And with our new set of gear on, we went out into the wilds and we spotted a level 560 prime giga that just so happens to be a male. So once we tame this beast, we're going to have a breeding pair and be able to work our way towards progressing to the next tier. It took us a while, but we did finally knock this beast out and sit here and watch it sniff the sky. That sky must smell great. Now that we have a sexy breeding pair of Giganotosauruses, I wanted to celebrate by changing my hairstyle to what it should really be. Well, it's the, still the same hairstyle, but I'm just changing my hair to red and my mustache to proper black. While we wait for the Giga army to breed up, we had a lot of time to kill, so I went out and tried to tame this Prime Basilisk. Now, it says it's a KO tame, but when I knocked it out, I realized uh, it's not. So it's just going to have to stay here knocked out because I can't even do anything to it. Day 73, we have a crazy amount of Giga Eggs, but unfortunately, they're not the stats that we want. So we basically have to kill most of them until we get what we're after. Day 74, the next lot of eggs were ready to hatch. We just had to weed through them to make sure that we had decent level Gigas in this army. Day 75, we took a bunch of Prime Direwolves over to the boss fighting arena. Yeah, these are all the babies to KSI and Logan Paul. Then back at base, I placed out a few of these Prime Gigas and Direwolves that we had spare. Unfortunately, I had to murder all of them so I could collect their blood and hide so I can create some more Giga saddles. Because yes, we are preparing for the boss fight tomorrow. The problem with the boss fights was always just pumping levels into them, adding saddles to them, and getting all your dinos ready it was a long and tedious task. Day 76 and our army is all prepared and ready to fight. I even had a couple Apex dinos that I had laying around spare, so I figured I'd bring them too. We summoned in the prime boss, which ended up being a massive death worm. <laughs> that thing looks like a big blue dick. Once it's summoned in, a bunch of my Apex Rexes basically died straight away. I struggled trying to send in my dinos to fight because I couldn't get a click on it. And everything was dying around us. Even all the walls that I put up were getting destroyed. Once I finally sent my army in, they all basically got freaking massacred. When I knew it was basically all over, I sent in my last of the Gigas and made a run for it. Go, 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 jump. See you later, blue big dick. 
I know it's a little bit of a bitch move on my behalf, but I don't like dying. Oh shit, my Giga! Oh man, this freaking sucks. Well, yeah, I guess that's karma. Once I respawned, I went back to the battlefield and tried to collect all the Giga saddles from the Gigas that died. They're expensive to make, I ain't gonna waste them. I had a pretty fresh Giga on me, so I went over to see if maybe, possibly, I could solo the Death Worm since it's stuck and I'm up here. But it could hit me and I couldn't hit it. So yeah, that, that, that's not gonna work. Day 77 and fresh off of a defeat from the big boss, I wanted revenge. And the prime boss has like these little minions that are out in the wild that we can actually kill quite easily. But that's when I had a big brain idea. I realized that these death worms are actually tameable. So I ran back to base and checked my wasp to see what I needed to be able to tame these creatures. I need boss rare flowers and prime rare flowers. But first, I think it's kind of important to place down a boss beehive. I mean, we need to add it to the collection, right? I need to make a crazy amount of boss rare flowers, which require boss essence. And to make boss essence, I need boss crystals. All of this to make boss honey, which is basically the last ingredient I need to make the prime boss kibble. Yeah, so I guess I'm gonna have to go out and kill a bunch of bosses to get their crystals so I can tame other bosses. Day 78, we went out looking for bosses to kill for their boss crystals. We found some and they died. Day 79, I returned to the death worms from earlier and I chose the weak one to kill. And for some lucky reason, the strong one fell off a cliff. I think he was aiming for our Kentro. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he definitely was aiming for our Kentro that was over there. Now he's kind of just stuck there. So, so this will be a lot easier to shoot him and knock him out with our Trank Darts. We then tamed this big prime death worm and I named him Penis for obvious reasons. I immediately started to ride my penis and then run around the map to see how much damage it would do. And Penis wasn't really that good. He was kind of limp. He probably suffers from some kind of dysfunction. I really had high hopes that a boss dino would you know be a lot stronger the only advantage this dino does have is that it does have really strong regenerative abilities it just drains your food really fast day 80 i had another light bulb moment what about a megatherium since it's a death worm technically it's an insect type so megatherium should be able to have a buff against the death worm and hopefully this megatherium that we just tamed will do the job if we can find a breeding partner for it, that is. Day 81, we found another Megatherium in the Redwoods, but it is also a female. We did start taming it, but then everything was ruined by this electric thylacolio. Oh man, I stuff you, stuff your mum, stuff, fuck. And since that Megatherium was a female, I didn't even bother going back to get it. And before you guys say anything, there's no point in us getting us a low level male because we don't have enough time in this 100 days challenge to be able to breed in the stats that we need. So that's why instead of just wasting time, we just went straight into setting up to fight the prime boss. But there's a problem. In order to fight the prime boss, you need an item that you get from fighting all the other bosses. And for some reason, I don't really remember why, we already had access to fight the Apex boss. And of course, this fight was significantly easier now that we're at the prime tier using prime gigas. Day 83 and I'm setting up in a brand new location to be able to fight this prime death worm. We really need to beat this death worm this time as time is starting to run out in this 100 days challenge. I prepare easily my most powerful giga army, summon in the prime boss and get my gigas to start munching on this big penis. Our gigas were fighting away valiantly. Some were dying. I threw out a couple spares that I had, but it wasn't enough. Once again, we were bested by this big blue worm looking you know what it is super frustrated i'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board once again and try and figure out how to progress to the next tier i'm really gonna have to come up with another plan but for now i think i'm just gonna have to grow an even bigger giga army than i've ever seen or done before maybe there's some power in numbers but for now i'm gonna have to work my way back through the boss tiers to collect their skulls just so i can summon in the prime boss once again this is that item that I mentioned a little bit earlier. It's a skull respective to the boss that you've killed. That's what you need to be able to summon in the next tier of boss. Day 85, I jump off my floating base island just so I can give you guys a view of the army that I've prepared to fight the prime death worm. That's all the gigas that I've got. All completely leveled and more saddles than I've ever prepared in my life. I go ahead and double check that all the gigas are fully healed. Then I summon in this big boss. I decide to ride this white giga because it kind of stands out and it's got a cool little color compared to all the others, I suppose. The big death worm comes in and I send every single giga I've got into battle. But for once, the prime boss's health is melting away and no giga has died just yet. Well, okay, there goes one. 
I keep my distance and just shoot health darts into them. And we're already at half health on the prime death worm. The death worm is melting away. More gigas rush in. We still have gigas there waiting. I think we're going to win this one. I make sure I get close to it so I don't miss out on getting all the stuff that I need. And we win. We win. We got this fight. Finally, we defeated the prime death worm boss. My biggest nemesis in this entire 100 days. Day 86, I had no time to celebrate. Instead, I just summoned in this Apex Summoner so I could get some more element. Because it was just me and the other Giga, this kind of took the entire day. And it was kind of a waste of time because my stupid ass forgot to fight it with my dino. Instead, I shot it so I didn't get any element. Day 87, and now we're up to the elemental tier. So we can essentially tame fire, frost, or electric dinos. And there's been one that's been on my shopping list for the entire time. This Fire Rock Drake. Having one of these is going to make it so much easier and safer to get around the map. And it's just stupidly lucky that it's a level 600. And if you're wondering how I had all the required stuff to be able to tame them straight away, just remember before when we got the honeybee, it was already producing honey for it earlier. And because we had the prime giga, we killed some of the weaker elemental dinos earlier. I just took it out of the video because you don't want to see me just grinding for stuff all the time. But hey, now we have our very own Fire Rock Drake that we named Angus. Because he reminds me of one of my dad's weird Scottish friends. Having Angus was so great. Although his attacks weren't super strong, it was good to have him so I could just get around the map quite easily. It was quite satisfying running away from this prime death worm. But back to the most important things at hand. It's getting late in this 100 days and we need to tame our final massive army so we can take on the end game bosses. Let's start with this level 560 Fire Rex. All confident, I started taking this beast out. After all, I got Angus by my side and a ton of Trank Darts. It was looking good until Angus ran out of stamina. Oh crap, oh crap, go, 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 go. Oh, for fuck's sake. The Fire Rex killed Angus. We only just got him. This was frustrating, but I need this fire axe. So I quickly went back to base, whipped up a little basic trap that I could make, and then returned to the location that the fire axe was at. I placed down the metal gates, got the fire axe's attention, and started kiting it in. I got it stuck in the little trap, but uh, it got out because I wasn't smart enough to put a bear trap down. So I quickly went back to base, made a bear trap, brought it back, placed it down. I then had to get the Rex's attention once again and kite it back over to this trap. Unfortunately, I wasn't fast enough. And yeah, uh, yeah. I returned back the next day, but I abandoned my last trap idea. This time, I'm going with a pretty foolproof method. Well, I think it is. Different way to bear trap this big beast. Behemoth gates. So I placed them all down in a row and then guided this Rex straight into the trap. This was so much easier. I just hope that that gap there isn't big enough for it to get out of. It's not, and now we have successfully knocked out our big bad fire axe. Things are looking up. Not too long after, in a different location, we spotted a level 600 female fire axe. We have not been this lucky all game. And taming this dino was pretty textbook. I just stood on top of the cliff until it started to run away, and then I got one of my prime gigas out and sat on the back of that until we could finally knock it out. And once we tamed this one, I was too damn excited. We have a level 600 fire axe. I had to name it Martha after your mum. It's now day 89 and yeah, thanks to our crazy ass breeding rates, we have a stupid amount of baby fire rexes already. This might be a little low P, but in this challenge, there's no way we would have been able to get through it on standard breeding rates. The rest of the day, we just went out into the wilds and massacred every single dino because we're basically top tier dino now and everything else is beneath us. This might seem like a little bit of a waste of time, but we're trying to mutate these fire rexes to make them supremely OP because we have a ton of really tough boss fights ahead of us. It's now day 90 and we have 10 days left to complete this 100 days challenge. We are basically at the top tier of the dinos that we could possibly tame in this mod, but we're still yet to defeat all the bosses. We have four elemental bosses, four world bosses, and the final boss, Wukong the Destroyer. We're now in the snow area, and I spot a frost Uteranosaurus. And I know very well that a UD might actually be the big difference between us winning and losing some of these boss fights. So I spend my time taming this fluffy T-Rex. Once tamed, I named this guy Jack Frost. Day 91 and 92, we spend the entire time working our way through the boss tiers again so we can get the Delta Skulls so that we can later on summon in the elemental bosses because we need multiple prime Delta boss skulls. Day 93 and it's time to fight our first elemental boss, starting with the Supreme Fire Boss. This comes in with 700 million health 
and has a passive ability that just burns everything around it. Even some of the Rexes that are in there that can't actually bite it are receiving damage. I gotta keep my distance but not be too far away as if we kill this I won't get the loot that I need to progress. I'm extremely nervous and it sucks because I can't actually get a read on how much health this boss has. And then we finally get a notification that we did defeat this fire boss and scored some loot with it. We even got a summoning potion that summons in this little nuclear golem. Apparently it works kind of like a forge I suppose and it crafts nuclear ore that we can then use to make armor. That's pretty cool. And since time's a ticking, I don't waste any more time. Later on in the day, I summon in the Supreme Electric Boss. This is just a crazy electric spider and its passive ability drains your entire stamina really quickly as well as does a bit of damage to you, I think. This fight was significantly different to the fire boss our Rexes were receiving so much more damage way more quickly. And luckily I was paying attention because there was a few times that our Yudi almost died. So I'd have to jump off it and quickly shoot it with a healing dart away from any damage coming from the electric spider. And then once again, we get a notification that the Supreme Electric Boss has been defeated. And the little gift that we get from this is the Vampiric Resource Golem. Again, that makes vampire or day 94 we summoned in the supreme ice boss which is the final boss before we go on to the proper elemental boss honestly this fight wasn't really that damn exciting we had so much more rexes this time that they kind of just melted the face off of this scorpion one moment there was some noisy rexes the next moment it was all silent and from this boss we scored the godly resource golem which creates obviously godly ore now before summoning in the elemental boss i wanted to give my rexes a little bit of a break and let them heal up in the soul balls so we went out in the wilds and you know just kind of killed some dinos and collected some blood and crystals because we're going to need that later on and when i was in the volcano area i spotted the lady of the desert and i know i need to kill this boss eventually so i tested out to see how well a couple rexes would do against this beast and uh well they receive a lot of damage and don't do barely any damage towards it there's only one way to really defeat these guys, but we'll get to that in a couple more days because we have an elemental boss that we need to defeat. As we began to summon it in, some yellow fog and snow came in and then the elemental boss was just a mechanical broodmother. I made sure I had extra Rexes and that they were fully healed in this fight because I had no idea how this would go and I cannot afford to lose any boss fights. We got the elemental broodmother all the way down to half health, then to a quarter health, and then we defeated this overgrown spider and learned a load of new engrams. Satisfied with this win, I jumped on my UD and then the, my UD jumped on all the Rexes to celebrate. Day 96, we're not wasting any time. I'm changing out of this prime armor and then into the vampiric armor that we've made from the vampire ore that we had. And from the engrams that we had just learned. I couldn't decide whether to wear it with the helmet on or off. Now I had one goal. I wanted to find myself a vampiric thorny dragon. So we got the location from our tech transmitter and started to glide right in there because it wasn't too far away from base. The only problem was the vampiric thorny dragon was stuck in this cave. So fighting this thing was going to be a little bit interesting with our firexes. We got as many firexes out as we could fit into this cave and then started munching away. Unfortunately, I couldn't really get a good angle for you guys to see anything. So we'll just skip to the end where I got my Uteranosaurus out just courage roared it the entire time until the vampiric thorny dragon died now yes we actually have to kill the thorny dragon and not just knock it out and tame it because once you kill it you get this soul that you can use to evolve a certain dino in the wild for the thorny dragon we need to go tame ourselves a fire moss chops day 97 as luck would have it there was a level 560 fire moss chops just below our base so i made sure to be safe on this one and trap it in with using these billboards which made knocking it out quite easy and then, yeah, we, I guess we just tamed it. I then took this massive fire moss chops back to base, put the thorny dragon soul into it, and then realized we're missing a couple ingredients, like frost blood and electric blood. Luckily, it was pretty easy to gather. Oh, look, a nuclear ferox. That's another creature just like the vampiric thorny dragon that we can kill and eventually evolve something into. Thankfully, this time it wasn't in a cave, so I could throw out a few rexes to help out fight this thing. But there's a problem. With these nuclear ferroxes, if you get a little bit too close, you as the player gains radiation poisoning. My radiation meter was ticking up quite high, but I had enough health potions to keep myself alive at least until it died. Once it died, I went back to base and just waited for my life to end. Once we respawned, the radiation was gone, so yeah, that, that's kind of my strategy for it. Okay, let's get back to what's important. Evolving this fire moss shops into the vampiric thorny dragon. We named this thorny dragon Andrew. I don't really know why. It just was the first name that came to my head. It's now day 98 and we only have two days left to finish this mod. So I jump on the back of Andrew, 
run around the local area to try and kill some dinos to get some real quick and easy levels and then go visit our friend from earlier the lady of the desert since we're on a super strong dino i'm feeling quite invincible nothing can stop us except pelovius yeah pelovius can, can probably stop us well this is not the time for that to happen so i quickly glided back got my fire rex out to deal with this pesky pelovia and all the stuff that's around and then jump back on our thorny dragon i shot at the lady of the desert and i was doing i think a lot of damage it was 300,000 times however many times it hit it but have you noticed anything yet the lady of the desert stuck so we can literally just sit here for the entire time until it's dead this took us a big chunk of the day but in the end i'm glad we get to walk away with this the lady of the desert token the vampiric thorny dragon's really good, but I think it might help us in this situation if we have another advanced elemental on our side. That's why I tamed this Frost Jaboa. You're probably wondering, why is this Frost Jaboa so important? Well, the Frost Jaboa evolves into the nuclear Ferox. This one right here, that we named Tristan. Now, you can't put a saddle on Tristan, so I went to make the armor in the Supreme Workbench. Turns out, it doesn't wear armor either. It wears a helmet. So I just made him a vampiric helmet, which I found out is quite cheesy because the vampiric helmet has over 30,000 armor value. This will probably get patched in the future. I then once again took Tristan out to go destroy the wildlife around our area to get some easy levels. Let me introduce you to the Lord of the Snow. I threw out a couple fire rexes to fight the Lord of the Snow. I don't know why. I know that they don't do a lot of damage, but I thought maybe they can tank a little bit of damage. Yeah, unfortunately that idea didn't last very long. So we're just going to have to solo the Lord of the Snow. We're doing over a million damage and and because of our little cheesy armor helmet method, it's only doing 5k damage to us. This was starting to take quite a while, so I got Andrew, our thorny dragon, out to help. But I kind of forgot that Andrew's not invincible like we are. Oh shit, my bad. I'm sorry, Andrew. But yes, we got the W in the end and have earned ourselves the Lord of the Snow token. Day 99 and we have two world bosses left to kill before we can summon in the final boss, Wukong the Destroyer. And since we have a pretty OP Ferox, both of these fights were pretty damn easy. They just took a really goddamn long time. It's now day 100 and we have one final boss left to defeat. I prepare for this fight with all the dinos that I've got spare laying around in the soul terminals back at base. I even brought the big blue penis. And now our entire army is ready to fight Wukong the Destroyer, our final boss. I go ahead and place all four of these world boss tokens into the boss summoner and then initiate Wukong's summon. Wukong is summoned in and he's just a massive yellow Bigfoot. He immediately starts striking all the dinos on the front line and then destroys them rather quickly. I run around and then whistle the rest of my dinos in, but they don't last very long either. We send in another wave of dinos. Penis is at the back there and I want to try and heal him before he dies, but he dies too quickly. But we weren't fast enough. Our next wave of dinos is getting destroyed, so we send in another wave. And we've already taken out 500 million health from Wukong. With the large majority of our army already gone, we send in our last few Rexes to fight. And now it's just one on one. We've taken out 700 million health, so the army wasn't all for nothing. Thankfully, our nuclear Ferox can tank a lot of these hits. Wukong started at 2 billion health, now he's down to 1 billion. 500 million and we're still going quite strong and damaging the heck out of Wukong. 200 million health left and we're about to defeat this boss. 10 million, 5 million, Wukong has a slither of health left. So we finish him off with one glorious strike. And there you have it. We have finally finished the entire Supreme mod. And if you made it all this way, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. It'll help me a lot. Thanks for watching this video. I'll catch you next time. Peace.